and welcome. I am stopping by so that I can answer some questions. Took me a half a minute to figure out how the heck to answer questions. Uh, they changed the live streaming thing. I don't know. So anyways, I wanted to stop by and answer some questions because I had um, some posted in the group. And I'm going to try to find them for you because I wanted to answer some of them. One of them was about kids. I had a, um, or uh, there was a post in the group about kids and kids seeing like this scary, um, you know, monster type thing as far as spirit activity goes. The reason I wanted to talk about that is because there's a higher than normal spirit activity uh, frequency, whatever you want to call it, going on right now. And uh, there are two people or two categories of people who are very susceptible to uh, seeing and hear, hearing a lot of spirit uh, activity recently, and that's going to be kids and it's going to be animals. The other thing about this, though, is when you find that your children are, you know, seeing like very scary spirits or whatever, that's something that you kind of want to, or like a beast, I think is what somebody said. They're not actually seeing um, what would be considered like a beast or something scary. That's potentially your interpretation of it. And then it starts to freak them out. But kids can see spirit animals and they can see um, sometimes not very clearly as well. So you may have a child who's seeing uh, maybe a spirit that they're not seeing very clear. And so they're unsure of what they're seeing. And I can tell you for a lot of children, it freaks them out if they see any type of uh, spirit that they don't think anybody else can see and or if they see a spirit or a spirit animal that's technically not supposed to be in their house. Um, as you can imagine, same with animals. Animals do not like to see other animals or people in the house who they don't know. So it's if you think about it, that's probably just not a bad thing. However, if you find that your children are seeing something that they feel like is scaring them, you want to reverse that back a little bit and just be like, you're totally protected. It's okay. Um, is it, you know, it's probably more like a spirit animal or someone watching over you and then they'll calm down and then they'll actually tune in better instead of trying to tune in out of fear. And when they tune in out of fear, their brain doesn't translate uh, their what they're seeing spiritually very well. It starts grasping on to um, other, uh, probably the role, or not probably, it starts grasping on to other scary things that they maybe have seen in movies or whatever, like monster type books or whatever. So you want to be their foundation when you're dealing with kids. You want to be like, you know, what do you, what do you see? And um, they're most likely uh, a protector and that sort of thing. My little grandson has woke up once or twice this week. One of them, the other one, uh, has already seen some spirits, and he's they're both two. One woke up and said, um, Mom, people in my room. And so um, he pointed to where the people were, and he didn't get upset or afraid, but his mom did not react in a very upset and worried way. She said, well, where are they? And and are they boys or are they girls? And um, well, what are they doing? And her, your vibe will dictate the vibe to how afraid your child's going to be. And when you allow them to be experiencing what they're experiencing without fear, they tune in clearer. And when they tune in clearer, it's a more calming experience and they get a more accurate picture, if that's uh, uh, what, that's what I'm trying to say. So. It's not that you have a beast running around your house. Um, <laughs> that is a child's book. That's more like what that would be. Um, I did post a thread. I'm trying to find it for you guys, so bear with me. And I'm going to uh, read some of the, answer some of the questions on here, uh, get through as many as I can. If you're on here, you can go ahead and ask me questions. Um, Hi, Michelle. Hi, Sharon. Good to see you guys. Oh, I have a lot. Holly and Mary and Kimberly and Kathleen and uh, Lori and... Oh, hi, Brenda. Brenda, are you supposed to be working? 
<laughs> um, Linda, Sarah, Bis Bismarck. That's a that's a good name. Um, Carol, Lindsay, and I, a Annie. I think. Um, so get your questions ready because I'm going to be answering questions live. But I wanted to go through and answer some of the stuff in here. One of the other questions that I have gotten a lot was the Kobe Bryant situation. And um, I'm going to address that first because I feel like that's on a lot of people's minds. How do you handle that situation, especially if you're an empath or you're just feeling just like it's a horrible situation? Uh, I also felt like it was absolutely a horrible situation. Just entirely went out to the kids and, and the mom and, um, you know, it's just very sad that uh, such a great uh, athlete mentor and father and husband um, had a situation like that happen. But when that happens and I'm uh, tuning into it, I see it in their charts. And so that's where I have to be trusting that when he created his chart um, and when um, you have guardian angels and um, um, spirit guides and everybody, kind of involved in that chart. I can't really question uh, what happened. I can be sad for them, sure, but somewhere it was written in his chart and that was uh, before he had come down. Would he have made that choice probably while he was down here? No, but that's why we don't write our charts when we're down here because when you're on earth, you would write a completely different chart than you would before you're incarnated on earth. Um, and that's why we write our charts beforehand because we have a whole different uh, perspective when you're writing it from a spiritual standpoint and the things that you want to achieve versus when we're in our physical life and we're experience, uh, experiencing other things from a physical perspective. And so our charts are written before birth and uh, it's absolutely hard, but I've developed a, a very... Um, easy way of respecting other people's charts and respecting what, if you want to say what God kind of had in store for them and that I wasn't part of that creation and I have to respect whatever happened there was for the betterment of the soul or the people and I have to just go with and appreciate their judgment call on that. And yes, you can be sad for them, but you have to also respect their journey and you know the spiritual path that he was on before that he was born so that was definitely a bummer for the people who was left behind um, I'd like to Martha says I'd like to know more in-depth information about the translation about the transition sorry to the other side in the case of suicide our family has been touched by close friends who have chose um, that chose this ending so I'd like more in-depth information about the transition to the other side. So it's the same type of transition as if you pass in a, um, uh, you know, motorcycle accident or like a, an accident or whatever. It takes a little bit longer for them to transition and be um, adjusted, I guess I would say, and to go through their transition process, uh, but they still process all the same. Um, most likely most of the time or I guess you could cut how you would kind of see that is a combination between maybe uh, an accident and or a health issue that's how you could kind of look at that Martha because most all people who commit suicides um, they are struggling with a mental health issue and so they're not necessarily in their right mind and they're struggling so much that they can't make it through. And so um, for whatever reason, they don't make, uh, they don't make rational choices, I guess I would say, um, as we would from a healthy mental perspective. So the transition is still the same. They still go to the other side, they go through, and then they decide when and if, how soon that they'd like to reincarnate. So Michelle, Kelly says, I'm curious about numbers, February 2nd or 20th, two 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 is basically 2-2020. Um, you know, I guess I'm not sure what you're curious about, but I'm assuming the synchronicities of numbers. Uh, numbers hold a vibration, and they are typically and normally used to get your attention um, from spirit guides and or angels and 
uh, you know, different council members or things like that. What I tell people to do when they see synchronicities is to feel around you at that moment, not try to figure out, okay, what message is this giving me? Although I'm sure that there's formulas you can do, but if you think about it, if everybody had the same message, if they got the numbers 222 or 999 or whatever it was, um, that would be kind of silly, right? But if you sit there and you tune into the feeling that you get once you notice a synchronistic number, you are normally going to be tuning into your guide, a loved one, or an angel at that point in time. You can feel the difference between their energies the more you familiarize yourself with them. Um, I actually will teach you how to familiarize yourself with the weight and the position and all this to be able to differentiate and categorize energies in my spirit communication class. So if you're interested in that, definitely sign up when that's ready. But anyways, you wanna stop and feel the energy and you wanna start familiarizing yourself with that energy because it will typically be the same person trying to get your attention each time that you're noticing the numbers. I will have people ask me um, you know, what it means to other people. Um, and what I mean by that is I wanna tell people if you're noticing synchronistic numbers, you're very in alignment with a certain type of spiritual energy at that moment. Because if you think of all the numbers that you've seen in your entire life, you've not noticed every single synchronistic number that you've seen, been around on a license plate, on a receipt, on a, anything. Like you're not in tune with every single synchronistic number that ever comes up. You're just not. There's like bazillions and bazillions of synchronistic numbers you've probably been subjected to your whole life. However, when a pattern of numbers or something catches your attention, familiarize yourself with the feel, familiarize yourself with the energy, because what you'll start noticing is the next time you see those numbers, does it feel like the same energy? Oh, okay, yeah, it does. Oh, wait, maybe this might be a little bit different. Then the next time, is it the same energy? And you will start to become familiar enough that you won't have to see synchronistic numbers when you recognize the energy and the energy will then potentially come with a message or um, a telepathic message or whatnot. So uh, that's what that kind of means. Um, as far as just the frequency of a number or a date, yes, numbers have higher frequencies and they do correlate astrologically a lot of times, as in the, um, you know, February 2nd um, and or the 2020 or to 2020. So there's usually a higher vibration that comes through the um, universal energy and earth energy at that time. So uh, they, they definitely carry vibrations with them. Uh, Jen says, yeah, I still like uh, for you to answer the question about levitating. Why I lost the ability? Is it common for empaths to do so? Um, if you had the ability to levitate and you lost it, um, it's probably or more likely the same thing as if somebody had the ability to be psychic when they were younger, then they lost it when they get older. Um, your belief system, your you have blocks, um, you stopped practicing in that realm. Um, there's like all kinds of things that can happen. Most children naturally come in with abilities, then they lose them as they get to be teens and adults. And then you have to re-familiarize yourself with those abilities as adults because you have now been uh, reconditioned with different belief systems on how things work, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I'm going to look down here. Uh, Robin says, "I was just looking at. I don't think that that one. Okay, Sharon says I'm trying to get this question. We've spoken about this topic. Uh, we've had love, fanatical love at times." Um, that is NARS, we've indicated we had a past life there, Italy, hers is Italy, and with all the past lives we've had, what makes that one so special? I'm very curious about how that works. Um, so basically, if you've had other lifetimes and or loved ones, I'm not quite getting this question, Sharon. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that you're asking about places that we've lived in other lifetimes and why we're so connected to them, and you're very connected to Italy. Um, because when you have a really positive, wonderful experience, you have, you know, we have spiritual memory and that spiritual memory will come up and it will resonate with us when something triggers that memory, such as a picture of Italy or um, going to Italy or something reminds you of Italy. You know, we have spiritual memories that are triggered. And um, if you've had a very amazing life 
uh, experience in an area, it's going to be triggered. Robin says, I dream frequently. How can I tell the difference between a dream that is working at an issue in my life versus uh, one that is a divine message? Uh, because they're, the one that's a divine message, they're very, very different dreams. Robin, I think that you're in the empath class and there's a section on dreams that you should probably take a look at too. But basically, uh, working on an issue in your life, those tend to normally be like uh, more random type dreams because you are being able to see what energetic things you're struggling with. So like if you're dreaming that you're trying to go up a hill or, you know, in a car or, you know, there's a storm coming or just things that have weird random events you're in a thing full of water and there's a house on the side and there, you're floating with toys all around you, you know, very random stuff. Um, that's usually an energetic type, type dream. A divine message, there you would know, absolutely would know because it has a, it has a different feel to it. You wake up feeling like, whoa, that like kind of freaked me out. It was, and the messages are usually very clear. If it's actually a divine message, you will wake up going, oh, uh, so and so is supposed to do this, or I'm not supposed to do that, or everything's going to be okay. I absolutely know because I got this message. They're very clear messages. They're not chaotic and confusing. So, um, uh, Joe said something about. I read through this earlier because it was very long. Basically, uh, she was in her bedroom, opened her eyes to see two glowing beings. Twenty years ago, they emanated a glow. One said she is still needed here. At that statement, I adjusted my head on a pillow to look better at them. Um, they both looked at me with a startled impression, laid there for a week. Basically, a week later, the mother of a friend of her youngest daughter was killed in a horrific accident. My questions were, um, what were the beings in my bedroom, and did they mean what, what did they mean by what I heard, and was I chosen to stay here on earth instead of the mom? No, you weren't chosen instead of the mom. Um, you seem to be tuned into a uh, two council members having a conversation about sounds like your life path is what that sounds like um, usually if they're glowing and that sort of um, from what you said it sounds like it was two uh, two guides or two council members but no they were unrelated to uh, the mom so that's something that you should probably not carry with you um, oh I do have questions over here just start reading your book tonight Tiffany says oh yay I hope you enjoy it what book Tiffany oh, um, and I would like to imagine a lot of us have some hands. Let me just go, how do I communicate with my mother? Uh, Stephanie, that's a whole long thing. Usually people have a hard time uh, connecting with their own loved ones. It's harder because you have that wanting to connect with them and that causes you a lot of blocks. And secondly, you'd have to do a lot of spirit communication um, training in order to connect with any spirits. And thirdly, it depends on if you have the ability or not the ability to connect with uh, spirits. Now, as far as loved one goes, love loved ones go. Um, like I said, I feel like your background you need a little bit tr more training in that area, and um, it's hard for people to connect with loved ones if if they're not just completely in belief and open to. Um, you know, having that connection that it, like how I explain that is if you just want it so badly that causes blocks because it causes you to be very physical then. And what happens when you're uh, working on spirit communication is, sorry, <laughs> is you need to uh, be able to tune into the spirit realm and that causes a certain or it, it requires you to have a certain level of detachment when you're communicating with spirits because you're going from the physical realm into reaching for spiritual information and reaching for a spiritual frequency and sometimes or many times that spiritual frequency is pretty subtle and what people reach for when they're trying to reach for a loved one such as a mother that has passed they're reaching for a very physical uh, frequency a very a strong physical energy and so you, you, there's a lot of training involved to learning how to recognize a very subtle frequency and then to recognize how to tune into that subtle frequency. And then once you learn how to tune into a subtle frequency, the frequency then becomes stronger and stronger. But the other thing that happens when a loved one passes away is, um, 
you question yourself. Uh, there, I found that more often than not, loved ones are leaving signs and signals and um, even telepathic message, messages to you. And most of the time, I find that people dismiss it. And they go, oh, that it couldn't have been, or I'm not really sure, or, you know, it's probably something else. So a lot of times they tend to dismiss it. So that's just a hard one in general. It, there, there's a lot of training and practice that goes on there. And after you've trained and practiced in the um, form of spirit communication, you're more familiar with subtle energies. You're more familiar with how the messages are delivered because they're delivered very differently than a lot of people think that they are. And then you have a heightened ability to tune in. So sadly enough, a lot of people block um, connecting in with loved ones because they just want it so badly and they're, in, they're, they're expecting it to happen in a very specific way. So um, now we're going to get down to Colleen. Uh, when two people die together as in a car accident, do they see each other right away in spirit form or do they die and go their own way? Usually they'll see each other right away after they go through the processing and you know stuff that they got to do. Um, a lot of times you are still connected with the loved ones that you were connected with here on earth because you've also been connected with them in other past lives. Um, you know, not often, I, depending on the people in the connection, I guess, but not often are you just like, yeah, I don't want anything to do with you, and you don't really see them in the spirit realm. You very much have relationships with them, usually in the spirit realm, as you do in the physical realm. doesn't matter if it was an accident or like a natural thing or whatever. Um, Dolores says, I love reading all your posts. My question is, I'm curious about triple numbers. I see them all the time. Um, also about spiritual awakening. I'm not really sure... Uh, I don't know what the spiritual awakening question is, but I think that we covered the numbers thing. And thank you for um, enjoying the questions. Uh, Joriana, I hope I didn't mess that up. I'm curious about seeing spirit animals. Is there something significant about them? I usually see them before I fall asleep or in dreams. I have seen a bull and a dragon on more than one occasion. I don't know if you mean um, significant about the bull and or the dragon or just seeing spirit animals. But I think that there's something significant because spirit animals are your protectors. And if you can see them before you, that would uh, actually make total sense because usually when you need spirit animal protection, they are typically uh, protecting you from spirit energy, lower vibration energy, not necessarily physical energy, right? And so when do you experience the most uh, spiritual energy? is when you fall asleep, because that's when you're connecting with the spirit realm. So uh, it would be very, it's very common, or it'd be make total sense for you to see the spirit animals before you fall asleep or in your dreams. And I think it's very cool that you're, you're familiar with the animal, spirit animals that you're seeing, the bull and the dragon, which would obviously be definitely connected to you. And you probably have connection with them in other lifetimes. So if you tune into the bull, you might actually see what your connection was with him in other lifetimes. And if you tune into the dragon, you'll see what connection you had with the dragon in other lifetimes as well. So um, I would tune into each one and see kind of where your connection to them lies because I feel like it's further back um, than just this lifetime. Uh, Rachel says, I'm curious about my communication uh, with spirit, why? I'm curious why my communication with spirit seems to come and go. Some weeks I will feel and sense spirit so close and then get downloads and weeks will go by without having um, anything out of the ordinary. Am I unintentionally blocking communication? I'm also very uh, new to figuring out my gifts. Rachel, that is super common for you to have a lot of communication then and not, not a lot of communication. It has really, it, how do I explain this? It's more about your training and what you're doing like it's it's not spirit communication is not about oh all of a sudden i'm just receiving information it's also about focusing and tuning in okay so it, having spirit communication and psychic abilities is a little bit different than having an empath ability for instance an empath ability that 
is going to be on all the time. It's hard to have a turn on, turn off switch. It's just going to go without you. When it comes to spirit communication and when it comes to psychic gifts, there has to be a more focused uh, energy going on on your part. And so first you have to be intentionally, usually intentionally focusing or have practiced it enough that you are aware of the physical responses that you're having when you tune into your psychic senses and when you tune into your spirit communication. Now, how do you become aware enough that it's happening without having to focus upon it? Well, two ways. One, you're born with it and that just was the way you stayed and you didn't outgrow it. Or two, you've practiced it so much that you're just familiar with it in a millisecond. So like for me, for instance, I was born with it and it never went away. And I've practiced it so much, I understand what's going on way quicker than like just normal. Now, I'm more familiar with uh, spiritual senses and energy than I probably am with physical energy because it's just something that I'm the most tuned into. So there's inconsistency most likely in training and or your awareness of how it feels and how spirit connects with you and how it communicates with you and by spirit i mean loved ones that have passed over or spirit any kinds of spiritual energy angels guides council members um animal spirits all of those things if you truly want to connect in with spiritual energy in a more consistent manner you absolutely 100 percent have to have training and familiarize yourself with it just so consistently that you're just, it, it triggers, it, you're aware of it the, just when it's happening. You're just, it, it grabs your attention. I am so aware of um, the, the feelings that I get in the body when my psychic senses kick in and when a spirit's around that it's just, it's an after. It's, I don't even think about it. I just, I know the difference between my physical senses and my spiritual senses. And that's where people get confused is they don't train in that aspect enough that they can differentiate the business. Truthfully, most people um, feel spirit communication as physical sensations. It's very interesting. So that's where the training comes involved. That's where you know you have more consistency and that sort of thing. <clears throat> so um, you guys go ahead and put your questions in because I think I'm at the end of what people are saying except for I was getting ready to answer something over here and then Eileen says is anyone else struggling to keep their vibration high this week I'm not sleeping it doesn't help bad mood blah 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 um, yes actually I was gonna do an energy report on it I've been working very um, consistently in long hours on finishing up a master class for you guys and um, then I'm going to get in my spirit communication class. So I have been MIA from podcasting and energy reports. But the frequency this week is um, bringing in a, a lower type of vibration with it, <clears throat> which is causing a lot of weird dreams, a lot of like creepy dreams, bugs, uh, weird events happening in your dreams, um, a lot of frustration weird things where you're just like kicking a chair with your toe all of a sudden and feeling like you broke it or something. Um, just feeling frustrated, irritated, being around ir people and also being very, very irritated at night when you're trying to sleep and being awake um, at night. So the energy, the, the spiritual energy is high this week, but with it is coming the, the lower vibration stuff. So, my suggestion to anybody experiencing any of these things is to definitely clear, 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 um, and make sure your space is clear and ground as much as you possibly can. <clears throat> so um, I did answer this in another thing, but uh, somebody had asked if we had moved, I think I actually answered this on the thread, but we moved to a house. Basically, um, they wanted to sage the house and they were wondering if they sage the house would it get rid of all the cool good spirits that they wanted around or family members. Uh, no, if you sage or clear a space, 
All it does is um, rid you of lower vibrations. It doesn't clear clear any energetic attachments to you unless you're you're choosing to do that. So like loved one energy would be energetic attachments and or a lower or high vibration. So it, high vibrations are not cleared and energetic attachments that you're trying to keep or even sometimes um, just accidentally hoarding onto you. Um, those ones will not be cleared, but any lower vibration ones that you don't want around will be cleared. Think of it, think of it like dusting or something like that. Um, oh, keys is for world. Cool. You're going to love that one. So, uh, Rebecca said, I just had a message in a dream from a male who said he was activating my key codes within my throat chakra, and all I saw was his hand moving uh, and moving in and out of my throat area. Awesome. Um, as we adjust frequencies, uh, we are actually, there's a lot of, it looks like people are doing codes. It almost looks like, um, oh, what would I say, like almost computer code or like any type of code you can think of your vibrations are being adjusted if you're moving into a higher frequency. And so um, that makes total sense. And or you're probably going to notice. And throat chakra is interesting because that's you, the spirit communication chakra. It's usually the throat chakra and um, the uh, anywhere from the heart chakra on up. But the throat chakra has a lot to do uh, with spirit communication. So most likely you might be receiving uh, some spirit communication and or it might be telepathic it might be through dreams but Rebecca that might be happening to you soon that's kind of an indication to that of that from what I'm seeing um, I woke from a dream speaking another language any thoughts Lori says yes uh, you're remembering a past life in another language <laughs> so um, that's actually more common than you think and when you um, dream and you remember a past life that you're having uh, you didn't speak English every one of your lifetimes. Um, you're just tuned, very tuned into a, another lifetime at that point in time and another skill that you have. After my stepfather passed, I would still have arguments with him when he would talk to me. <laughs> he always says, that's awesome. Uh, Stephanie said, thank you for that. I will look into that because I've always been interested in that. Okay, perfect. Absolutely. Um, I think that you should look into that because uh, I think that... Um, I think that you'll love it. I think if you're interested in it, I think that there's a way that you can learn to develop that skill um, for loved ones, but you can also develop it for other loved ones. So I think you should totally look into that. Uh, Deborah says, some days I feel that I have some type of connection or sensitivity, or should I say I notice things a lot one day and other, thing, time, other days I don't, and I don't know if that makes sense. So that makes absolute sense. Um, it just means that on it, it can mean two things, not just the training thing, which I also talked about, um, which is that's where inconsistency comes in is because we're human. And if you're not trained well enough to know what uh, your spiritual senses, your psychic senses feel like, and um, they don't override your physical sensations, because like I said, most people go, oh, they think they're physical sensations that they're having when they're actual, um, your psychic senses are kicking in. So if you're not very clear on that, another reason that that can happen is depending on where your vibration lands. Uh, you have to, especially if you're learning to train yourself, your vibration needs to be on a higher level for your psychic senses to be clearer and kicking in stronger. If you're having a bad day, or you're in a very physically um, based mindset, you're being very physical that day, and you're very um, right brain that day, your, your connection's going to be lower. So you're not gonna tune in as easy, um, and you have to think of it this way, it's like turning the channel on a radio station. Uh, spiritual frequency is way up here, physical frequency is way down here. You have to be able to reach that higher frequency. So some days you might be more up here and you can reach it and hear it. And other days you might be more down here where you're having a lower vibration, a bad day. Um, you're just more physically based. You're more right brained. Um, and so when you learn to tune in, you learn to go more left brain, brings you up a little bit. You learn to raise your vibration, brings you up a little bit. You learn to uh, be more familiar with your psychic senses, brings you up a little bit. Oh, now that information is very close, right? So that's the stuff that you need to learn 
on how it works to tune in and, and, and that sort of thing. So uh, Rebecca says, what's your opinion about low pressure with weather affecting one's pain in the body? Um, it absolutely affects crazy things in the body. So I, my opinion is, yeah, it's a bummer. <laughs> it affects a lot of things in the body. And um, my sinuses are literally like a human barometer. It's not awesome. Um, so Brianna says, hi, things have been making me angry lately, and I'm normally a calm person. Is that normal? Well, not necessarily, but it is when we have a very aggressive um, energy wave come through. So we've been having a very aggressive energy wave coming through this last week, and it's causing a very aggressive, um, choppy, just tense energy to be going around everybody, right? It's flowing in and around all things. It's, it's moving through like a weather pattern, and as it's moving through, it moves through us, right? So as it moves through us, we're just like, ah, okay, I'm very irritated. You, you, you read and feel that energy unless you're allowing it to pass through. And let's face it, sometimes it just doesn't pass through as quick as we want it to. So the thing is with energy waves is, is if you find something happening that's out of character for you, especially usually when it comes to frustration, feeling sad, feeling upset, feeling down, who cares if it's positive because it'll just ride that wave all day long, right? Like just who cares? Don't question it. Just keep it going. Um, but if you're feeling the ones that are not matching your normal higher vibe, positive personality self, nine times out of ten, if it's not, you know, situations you're around, it's actually an energy wave that we're experiencing. It's a weather pattern energetically that is floating through. Why that's good to know is because you can go, Okay, I need to make some adjustments here because this is not me. So I need to adjust the energy around my space. I need to clear my space. I need to do some grounding. I need to check myself on my perspective and make sure that I'm not adhering or subscribing to this frustrated pattern. And basically what my family says, my son-in-law, which is so funny, I need an attitude adjustment. When we notice an energetic pattern moving through, that doesn't match our normal positive self. We always say that we need an we need an attitude adjustment, and we consciously make an effort to not uh, tune into that frequency. And you can you can it's just more of an effort when it's like kind of like flowing through you through the week, right? But at least then you don't subscribe to it and you don't own it as part of your vibe, right? You allow it to move through you instead of going, okay, I'm going to hold on to you. Um, is there a way to know how many past lives I've been through? Yes, there is. Um, that is a reading, however, but it's been many. Um, but yes, any reader can kind of walk through your past lives with you. Uh, Jamie, uh, replying to Erica, Jamie Johnson says, I'm also curious about this. Is there a way to learn uh, when we've lived? Yeah, there's actually ways to learn. Um, you can do you can dream about it. Um, places that I can give you a very simple trick without doing a reading. Um, if and I'd like any of you who are listening to put put this in right away because I'm getting to the end of this. Is there any place, city, uh, country, or whatever that you are super super drawn to that you don't currently live at? Post it in here. I want to see what you guys say. Is there any place that you're just like, oh my gosh, I, I love it there, or I am so want to go there. If I won the lottery, I would totally go to Italy, or I would totally go to Greece. Like, what in your heart's desire would be the place that you just love, you go to as much as you can, or you just desire to go there so much? Post it in the comments. I want to see. Because that is one of the first steps to connecting with some of your past lives because you are connected in some way almost always to an area through a past life memory when you're like you feel that heart tie there you feel that passion to be connected to that place or to go there 
not necessarily somewhere you were born and then moved away from and you you want to go back there because you were born there you know not like that kind but something um bali cindy fan bali indonesia there you go so there is either there's although i'm just going to cheat on this one because you actually posted and it's taking a while for people to post on here um you actually did live a past life there in bali um and there's been two so uh there's actually cindy if you were to go to bali there would be a very specific island you'd be super drawn to so that's the beginning you start there and then you go okay you look at the pictures of bali look at the pictures of greece and start and just feel that connection and just allow pictures to come in and go okay if i was there in a past life what would a year be if I was there in the past, do I feel like when I was there, what kind of life did I live? What, do, what, there will be some type of energy and some type of memory that will surround that for you. If you're in a normal headspace, you'll question it and go, oh, I'm making stuff up. Well, who cares? Pretend like you're making stuff up because that's the first part of making that connection because you're going to find that there's, a, this is a whole class, but there's a whole way that people actually have to work at making stuff up, but allowing things to come in when they think they're making stuff up it's a whole different process they work with two different parts of your brain so start there Del uh, Dolores puts definitely Greece and Rome area take time to tune into that or if you're watching a show like when things hit your heart center and you're like wow like I feel so good when I watch this or I feel so good when I look at this start asking yourself what 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 Oh, sorry what was I what, what did I feel like I did like was I a woman was I a man was I a child did I, what was the environment like like tune into how you feel like the culture was at the time and just like use pictures use movies tune in and it's a really cool exciting thing to do because the more that you tune in the more that you'll potentially get and then the interesting thing is the next time you see a picture all of a sudden that whole memory that you had would trigger and then you might even get more so you're starting to train yourself to tune into that spiritual memory. Greece or Spain desired to go there so bad. Start, pull up pictures, look at different areas. So Spain's a big country. Greece is a big country. Some areas are going to be like, mm, that, yeah, I like it'd be cool to go there, but no, I really want to go here. I really want to go to Athens, or I really want to go to. Um, Oh shoot, I can't remember this other area, Greece, that's super cool. But I, you know, there's going to be a part of it that you're going to be like, yeah, but this place, this is where I want to go, you know, and then just tune in. And that feeling you get in the heart center, that is you actually tuning into your spiritual body. That is you reaching into your spiritual body for information. The interesting thing, people that, you know, your, your actual memory is here, your spiritual memory is here. <laughs> From here to here I can't do that very good but it's right here in this area so when you start with a heart center and you start to tune in that way you're starting to tune into your spiritual brain and your spiritual memory see like your your right brain would think it'd be in the same place but it's not um, Jamie says there are time periods when I'm attracted um, there are time periods I'm attracted to yes that's another thing time periods um, you might find that you're watching Vikings or you might find that you're watching Outlander or you might find that you're watching um, other whatever movies and, and you'll be like, oh my gosh, like I love that this show fills my heart so much. Like I, I feel so connected in what's going on at this time period. That's, that's like that thing. That's like, that's that spiritual brain going, yes, that was a good time. I remember this. This feels familiar to me. You know, um, Stephanie says, England, my soul feels like it's at home. I spent six months there a few years ago. I was also in a meditation, and um, I don't know how to pronounce that word. <laughs> Hakate, come to me. I was in a cave wearing peasant dress, white sandals. Very, very good. Tina says, Egypt and beaches. Very good. All the energy that centers like the Sedona Bermuda Triangle. Wonderful. That's because of the healing um, energy and stuff. You are very connected to past life. If you notice, so Tina, you're not Atlantis, Bermuda Triangle, Sedona, um, Egypt. Those are all very uh, healing, mystical, spiritual places. 
What does that indicate? Past lives as a healer, past lives as a mystic, past lives in the spiritual um, work area, I guess I would say. Uh, you guys, it, in the past, there was more spiritual workers and more spiritual guidance and spiritual counselors that were like us than ever before, than there is now, like just way more. It was way more uh, appreciated, sought after, believed in. It was more a part of everybody's culture. Um, so they were very important people, spiritual workers. I get that. Jamie says, I get the sense I lived in World War II, Holocaust victim, also very common. Um, and I also do feel like I help slaves to freedom. I'm drawn to helping and fighting for the press. See, you're very connected in, Jamie. You're connecting in with memories um, and Spanish, la Spanish language in a past life. Um, amazing. And are we more in tune with our spiritual gifts as a child? Yes, um, you are because you are born very uh, still familiar with who you are in um, the spirit realm. And in the spirit realm, what are you using? You're using spiritual senses and spiritual gifts. You come to the physical realm, you are what less familiar as a child with your physical senses, right? Ooh, you, you have to teach your children, oh, don't touch that, it's hot. You have to teach your children what to do when they get cold. You have to teach them what it means when they're hungry, um, what it means when they're full. They have to learn the sensations of feeling hungry, feeling full. They have to learn how to walk and use their feet and their balance, all their physical sensations they are not familiar with. They're very familiar with their spiritual gifts. And so then um, as they become more in tune with their physical gifts, uh, the, their teachers, their, their loved ones and their parents start telling them, oh, the spiritual, you know, whatever you're experiencing spiritually, oh, that's not real. Physical is real. Then you go away from it. Unless, of course, that you were, um, uh, what I want to say, like just it, higher psychically or that um, your parents didn't shut that down in you. Um, but as, as a rule of thumb, Brianna, yes, uh, you're usually more tuned in to your spiritual gifts as a child. So um, anyways, uh, Eva says Egypt, Bermuda, Triangle, Tibet, or Eva, I believe. Sorry, Eva, if I re didn't pronounce your name right. Uh, again, those are all very healing points. And so that's a very good indication of past life spiritual worker as a healer or spiritual worker. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the uh, Q&A, live streaming, that sort of thing. I got to as many questions as I can, could. <laughs> uh, it definitely keep going on the past life thing. You guys are on it right now. I'm definitely feeling the vibe. You're tuning in. You're getting it. Um, it's going to bring forth a lot more information from you. Keep practicing it. Keep doing it if you're interested in it. Those of you who are interested in the spirit communication class, um, or spirit communication, it's not going to be for a few months or whatever. But when that comes up, there's going to be some really good stuff in there. So definitely uh, make sure to check that out because I always do the um, really good price at the beginning for my people um, before it goes live to the public. So I hope to see you next time. Um, soon. Have the most amazing night. Aloha. Bye.